Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I have another great technique created by my friend Alessandro Boncio, and I'm gonna show you how to do this holographic transition. So jumping into Cinema 4D, what we have right now is a bust that matches this image that we have of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I'm just gonna show you how we set this up. So if you hit Shift C, you're gonna come up with this uh, search bar here. And what we use was the Doodle object. So if you type in Doodle, you can go to Add Doodle Frame. And under that Doodle object, there is a Load Bitmap option here. And we'll load up that PSD that has this image of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And we can do Shift C again and then type in Display Tag, hit Enter. And on that display tag under visibility, we can turn that on and then we can kind of slide the visibility of this doodle object on and off. And what we did was we just went to this new asset browser and I typed in bust and there's a mail bust or a generic one. You can just add this in and then we sculpted it a little bit just so that we could uh, kind of push and pull things so it matched Dwayne's face just a little bit more, but it really doesn't have to be perfect. So that's kind of how we set up that base mesh. Now we're gonna clone a cube onto this mesh on all these vertices, um, but the thing, uh, if you just start with your sculpt is that a lot of these polygons are pretty uneven. So around the ears, it's really small polygons. And then around the face, there's bigger ones. We want these to have even polygons. And we're gonna do that by using the remesh tool. So we'll hit Shift C again, type in remesh, enter. And all we're gonna do is drag that mesh into it and give it a second to calculate. And it's gonna even out the polygon sizes for all of these. So now we have a nice base geometry to clone our cube onto. Let's hit Shift C and we'll add a cube and let's make this a little bit smaller probably five on each x y and z all right so we got our little cube here and we're going to add a cloner shift c type in cloner hit enter put the cube in the cloner and instead of grid mode we're going to change that to object mode and we're going to clone all these cubes onto this remesh so we'll click and drag the remesh down into that object slot and now we have the cube projecting onto this mesh. We just need a lot more of them. So let's go to the count and go to 5,000. So we have the cubes projected onto this face now, and I'm going to turn this mesh off so we can't see it. We just have the cubes, and we're gonna want these cubes to be long and skinny. So we'll go to the cloner and we'll play with the size of these. And I believe it would be the X that we want them to be on. So let's keep that at one and we'll go to 0 0.05 on the other ones. And now we have these long lines here. Right now they're projected onto this mesh and they're kind of uh, aligning to the vertices. We want them to all be flat. So we're gonna go into the cloner, we're going to object and under align clone, let's uncheck that. And then they'll be going left to right. All right, so this is the base of our technique and now we need to randomize these and add some animation. We're gonna do that with a random object. So we'll add a random and we'll make sure that in the cloner under effectors, this random is in here. And you can see that we're randomizing now. Uh, what we want to do is go to the position and we'll make that 35, 0, and 0 so that it's only going to be wiggling left to right. And under effector to add some animation, instead of random mode, we're going to change that to turbulence. And now we're gonna get this really nice animation of it kind of blobbing back and forth. So this is the basic start of this technique. And what we can do is go to the strength and we can add a keyframe for strength. And then towards the end of our animation, we can keyframe that down to zero. And one other thing we can do is go to the parameters under scale. Let's turn that on. And we'll make the X scale 10. And that way we're gonna smear these lines left to right even longer. So you start to get this really nice line effect. And then what we can do is uh, duplicate that random and in the cloner, make sure that we have that other random duplicate in there. And we can go to the effector and we can maybe change the random mode to noise. And we could play with the different parameters, maybe make them longer. But now because we've added a different animation type, you can see that it's becoming a lot more complex and looking really, really cool. All right, the last thing we have to do is just uh, texture this. Let's go ahead and go to our window material manager. And we have a material set up here. So if I add that to the cube and then we hit render, you can see what this looks like. And we basically set this up by having a RGB split. So I'll make a new material and I'll show you how I did that really quick. We'll turn off the color, go into reflectance, and uh, we're just gonna remove that default one. So the way to add a RGB split in one material is just add three GGX. So we'll add a GGX, add another one, add another one and we'll make the top one red, the next one green, bottom one blue, and we'll take the top two and we'll make those add. 
So we're adding those to the bottom one. Then we can go to the red one. We'll make this a red color. Then we'll go to the green and we'll make this green. And then the bottom one we'll make blue. So this is a very cool way to add a RGB split inside of one material. So if you go into the R, the G, and the B, and you just play around with the roughness, the reflection strength, and the specular strength, and then you look at this little thumbnail, you can see that we're getting a lot of different looks here, and we're splitting the three different colors. So if we hit render with this new material, so something like this is very purple, but you also have that pink and that red kind of coming through just to give it a little bit of variation. All right, so that's it uh, for the Cinema 4D. And we have this great animation that reveals this head shape. And then all we have to do is jump over in After Effects quick. All right, so here we are in After Effects and we have this render from Cinema 4D, which is a really nice animation. You can see that we have that color split here. And as it resolves into the head shape, it also changes to be all blue. And underneath here, we have this um, composition of Dwayne. We've simply added a colorama to make it blue. And then we've slowly faded it on with an opacity at the same time as we're fading off that hologram with the opacity as well. And then you get this really nice reveal. And then um, we just added a little bit of glow and that's about it. It's really fun to play with. So feel free to use it as a transition or you can just use this animation style in Cinema 4D. Maybe you have this as a HUD element just slowly animating on top of a desk or something. It's a great technique and there's a lot of different ways that you can use it. So huge thanks to Alessandro for sharing this technique. I hope you guys found it useful. Good luck with your projects. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.